Okay, so factor product. So there is another version of another formula for finding the vector product of two vectors. And this is given to you on the formula sheet. In fact, it's the only thing given to you in the additional pure part of the AS formula sheet. So it's defined as uh, the modulus of A times the modulus of B or magnitude if you prefer multiplied by the sine of the angle between the two vectors and the unit vector perpendicular to them both. So um, you know that the vector product is a vector that's perpendicular to them both. Um, because this is a unit vector, so because you've got your little n hat being a unit vector, it makes no difference to the magnitude of the result but it does give a direction because otherwise, so we know that the cross product is a vector, therefore it has a direction, but the modulus of a vector times the modulus of a vector times the angle is not a vector. So that's why you have to have your unit vector there to give the direction, otherwise it wouldn't be able to equal it. So what, we could, what we're then gonna do is try and visualize what this is now i think you know this is to you, you may or may not this may or may not make sense to you you don't need to know it really we, we've not really seen any questions where you've had to really have any understanding of this but it's just sort of kind of a nice way to think of it um the definition and it is a definition of vector product they talk about the right hand set of vectors so basically when you've got your right hand and your thumb your fourth, well, your first finger, your forefinger, and your middle finger, the way that it would make uh, a connection like this. Ooh. So that's why we call it the right hand set of vectors. So, one way of doing it is to think of the corkscrew and the way that you turn the corkscrew and the way that it works. So, your corkscrew is placed perpendicular to your vectors A and B. If you turn it in the direction from A to B through the smallest angle, then the direction the end of the corkscrew will move is the direction of the cross product. In the diagram, this direction's up, okay, out of the cork. To find the direction of B times I, A, think about what direction the corkscrew would go in. If you're turning it from B to A through the smallest angle, then you would be in the diagram, the direction would be down into the cork. That's where you get what we'd already mentioned, your anti-commutative property of the vector product. And we've talked about that, okay? How would we ever use this? The reason we can use this, um, well, it basically what we did was we found, because we were in a bit of a rush and it's important that you know that you can use a vector product to find areas of triangles and areas of par parallelograms, we didn't go into this in great detail, but now we can. So what we're going to do is uh, have a quick look at how it's formed and it's formed using that formula you used in GCSE and in A-level maths. So where you know that the A of a triangle is a half A times B times the sine of the angle between them. And so we set that up in exactly the same way. So that's how we think of it. And we simply, because of the result that we've learnt, so we know that this is how we would find the area of a triangle from GCSE, and then all, oh, whoa, sorry, I'll just bring that back. All we're doing really is going to our new formula where we know that that's one, the magnitude of that is one, and we're literally replacing that with that. So that's the reason that we can find the area of a triangle being this. So that's where the understanding comes from. Right, would we ever use it to find an angle? I don't know. I don't know whether I would unless I was expressly told to. I think I would much prefer to use the scalar product that we used in pure core. So if you had a question like this where it asked you to find the angle, you can see I've sketched it. And obviously to use a scalar product from pure core, I would have to find vector A to B 
and vector A to C, which I have done. Okay, I find I find them. I haven't gone into huge detail with this because I know you know how to find vector A to B and A to C. I found the scalar product um, and I found the modulus of each of them. And that gives me cos theta. That shouldn't really have a line there. Can you know, if you can just ignore that, it's got a line underneath. So it's that divided by that. I inverse cos it, I get 37.8. So that's something you did loads of in pure core one. If we now think about using this formula, exactly the same question. So what I do is I find on my calculator the cross product of vector AB and vector AC, which I get there here. I know the modulus of AB and the modulus of AC is 81. And I know that this is a, ve a unit vector, so it has magnitude 1. Okay. Here's the modulus of my cross product, that's the square root of 2465. So I know that by rearranging this formula, so you can see that by rearranging the formula that the sine of theta will be the cross product divided by the modulus or magnitude of both of the vectors. So that's all I've done here and I've ended up with exactly the same angle.